Any final questions that we can take um, to answer anything that so you April know? availability. What's that? April availability. April. Yes, that's correct. April 5th. April 15th, 35th, you know, <laughs> any particular specific before, time. Before end of this month. Before end of the month. Yeah, end of as the month. Jay mentioned, we have been in betas and proof of concepts mm -hmm. for a very extended period of time. We've already had a first paying customer um, for this um, and huge level of interest, as you'd imagine. Because Scale requirements on these things, you know, uh, from yeah, so minimum right now, to maximum. Right, so the HC2, uh, which is one of our flagship platforms, is where we're introducing this. Mm -hmm. That has got five gigasmart modules, so customers can start off with just one, and they can scale it up depending on the capacity needs that they have. Max number of sessions, you know, uh, available in that. Right, if, so that. If you know off the top of your head, you know, you don't have to like, you know, quote a data sheet or anything. Sure, it's about 100,000 concurrent sessions. Okay. Yes. Sorry. It's about 100,000 concurrent sessions, and yeah. Excellent. And you said it's going to be on HC2. Is it? Is there? Are there plans to move this onto another platform? Yeah, we'll extend this to other platforms. But given the fact that HC2 has been a flagship platform and is a flagship flagship platform, we want to introduce it first on that. Mm -hmm. It's also the appliance where we have the inline bypass capabilities. Mm -hmm. uh, we have since extended that to the Gigaview HC1, which is a smaller form factor one. But we thought we'll start high first because you know, this is a computer intensive. Um, capability. Let's see, what's the uh, level of effort for implementation and adoption of this into the environment? That was one of my first questions I wrote down, but it was, you know, where it would fit. Yeah. Back. So, Anish, yeah. you want to answer sure. uh, so how much it is taking? Acquisition, for deployment, you know, go time kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, relatively short because uh, we provide a very flexible way of defining all the policies, um, all the what we call flow mapping to define what traffic exactly get, gets sent to the to the engine for decryption. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the future releases, uh, we are going to enable workflows uh, in our fabric manager. Mm. So it's a kind of a next click, you know, you configure and you deploy the policies. It's a very intuitive way of uh, deploying the whole solution. Uh, and is it, it's, it's a GUI based workflow as opposed to a entirely designed command line scripted language that some other companies who don't necessarily do the exact same thing but do similar things have built themselves and that's made right. all their exactly. end users exactly. hate it. As you saw from the many of the demos that uh, Anish did, there was no CLI that you saw there, mm -hmm. right? So it's all GUI based. Uh, but as you mentioned, we we do plan to also integrate this into the Fabric Manager, which will be available towards the end of this month, uh, when this product becomes available uh, in you know generally. Available. And then from an integration standpoint, so what what's the effort from the RSA Net Witness side? Hey, I need to go and do this or do that in order to allow that kind of round trip connectivity of the traffic to, before it eventually goes out. I mean, it's, it's very straightforward. We receive a stream just like we would if it was unencrypted. Mm -hmm. So it's completely transparent to us. Yep. Okay. So, so there's, there's really, when you, when you have these other parties that you're sending traffic to, it's really just a matter of sending a cable to them and passing them traffic like they yep. would if they were it's aware. Right. It's plug and play. However, if you want to do something more sophisticated, for example, you know, uh, there is, you can do a lot of really sophisticated things uh, with the Gigamon platform, such as you get the metadata, for example, and if you start seeing certain metadata, then you issue an API call to do the decryption. So if you want to do those kinds of things, then integration is required. Otherwise, as Jim was saying, um, it's pretty much plug and play. Mm -hmm. And you're seeing most deployments be inline as opposed to uh, as an out-of-band handler, effectively. You mean the tools that consume the data? Yeah, uh, yeah. So there are two portions, the network side and the tool side. Mm -hmm. The network side for Diffie-Hellman and modern ciphers, yep. you have to be in line. Mm -hmm. The tools can be either in line or out of band. It, it, exactly, yeah, I could see the tools being out of, out of band and where necessary. Yep. Especially when it's data analytics, just inspection and looking at that traffic. That's right, that's right, yeah. And last one really quick for you. Um, all the third-party products you're talking about forwarding traffic to, there's really no compatibility, if you will. It, those products don't have to have any capability to work with your product. It's, That's they treat it like it's normal, port 80, HTTP. Exactly. They don't know the difference. Just like you would connect to a bridge, you would connect to a tool port. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's just, it's just bridging. That. It's all layer two. All right. yeah, and it's port agnostic, just like a lot of our tools. Like okay. Tools.
In, like it, no, no ATM products though. <laughs> It's yeah. got to have an Ethernet connectivity. It's yeah. TCP/IP. <laughs> <laughs> so how is how is how is pricing on this product base? Is it based upon throughput, or is it just you buy the module and, and go, or how's yeah, it? Yeah, good question. So the way we price uh, this product is there is uh, a price for the Giga Smart module, right? Which is the actual engine that's got multiple types of applications. So for example, there is. Uh, metadata application, there's one for application session filtering, there's one for deduplication, likewise there's one for SSL decryption as well. Okay, so, uh, and that price includes everything. So for example, the URL categorization um, uh, license for that, it's all included completely in it. So we don't charge anything extra for that. It's what, $30,000 I think? Is That's the, right, yeah. the software license is 30,000, it's perpetual. Is, it's we a don't perpetual have any. license, a okay. one-time fee, excluding support of course. Uh, $30,000 for the GigaSmart um, software license, which is the SSL decryption software license. And then of course the chassis and the GigaSmart hardware would be extra. Maintenance, 18, 20% yearly? Or no, maintenance, else? I believe it's 12%. Okay. Uh, and it's uh, for standard, um, eight by five support, and then 24 by seven, which would be a premium support, would be 17%. 17%. Thank you. And that's uh, on a yearly basis, of course, a multi-year, um, packages are also available. Mm -hmm.